Hey guys, this is one pixel at a time and I wanted to make this video today to show you how I made my homemade snowblind project. I actually saw this at an expo, at the anime expo this year, and I said I want one. So I went online and looked it up and it turns out that you can only purchase one if you buy a whole build. And I, I don't have the money for that so obviously I said you know what, I'm going to figure out how to make one at home and that's what I did as you can see in this uh, video. So I'm just going to go over it very briefly, show you what I did, what I think I could have improved on, and to show you the final product and some points on that as well. Before we go any further into this video, I just want to say that I am an amateur PC modder. Um, I know some things, but not a lot. Most of what I learned was, of course, from research and videos I saw. Um, so I put all that knowledge together and built this. So more than anything, I'm just sharing my experience with you. If you know I did something wrong, you're more than welcome to put in the comments or if you have any suggestions, again, put in the comments. Like I said, some people out there would know a lot more than I do, but this is what I went with and it worked. So without further ado, let's get started. So I started this project uh, using an NZXT H440 case. That's the case I already own. So I decided I'm gonna work with this, especially since it has a windowed side panel. Um, so the first step was to find an LCD that would fit into that opening. So I measured the opening. It's about uh, 15 inches by 10 inches wide. So in order to have something that fit, I didn't want an exact fit but a close fit. So I went with something a little smaller. Of course, the issue is when you're buying online, you don't have anything to physically measure the monitor so you can compare how big it is. You know, you don't have like a ruler or some sort of measuring tape to actually measure it. So the tricky part was to find a way to measure the monitor and I wanted that form of measurement to be as accurate as possible. So I looked around um, and I found an app that did just what I wanted it to do and it was called Image Meter. The app is very simple to use. All you need to do is know the measurement of a monitor. For example, this one right here, it's 21.5 inches. So you make a reference scale or something to that says, okay, this distance is this much. And from then on, any other measurement you do is accurate or is uh, a reference to the first measurement you made or the base measurement. Um, so that's what I did. I looked around until I found a monitor that was the dimensions I wanted it to be. The monitor size I was looking for was 17 inches. Anything else would have been either too big or too small in my opinion. So what I found was an HP W17E. This monitor has a resolution of 1440 by 900 pixels, which I think is fair for this project. Of course, I also read online that having a monitor with too much pixel density would not be good for this project, so I wanted something with lower resolution. Now, of course, I'm not sure if this is accurate, so don't take my word for it, but that's what I decided to go with and it worked, so I know that much. I got this monitor on eBay for about 40 bucks, so it wasn't too expensive and it did perfectly what I wanted to. It didn't have any scratches on it, it was in good condition, and if by chance I messed something up while putting this together, it wouldn't set me back by too much money, so I, I went with this alternative. So this is my current side panel with the LCD already put in. As you can see, I use a lot of electrical tape for this project, which came in handy because, you know, electrical tape is non-conductive, which is what I wanted. The whole LCD panel doesn't actually show an image. When an LCD panel is inside a monitor, the extra part of the LCD panel is being covered by the plastic around the, the border. When I put the LCD panel on my side panel, you can see those components so in order to cover those up I put some black plastic dip and it it looks nice now actually so I put a few layers of that and of course if I would have messed up it's rubber so it's easy to peel off so I did that before I put it on the plastic on my panel and it's being held together just by tape so it's not a very permanent hold but it's one that works the tape is very very strong so it's not gonna be moving anytime soon and considering I don't move it much it should be just fine in order for an LCD panel to work properly, it needs a really strong backlight in this case. What I used as a backlight was these cool white LEDs, which is the kind of lighting most LCDs have internally. And that's what I put on here. As you can see, I have two rows on the top and one on the bottom, mostly because of just how the case is on the inside. I decided to put more lighting on the top because it would light the case up more. I connected these LEDs to some wiring I bought at Home Depot and I connected them to uh, actual uh, an LED control for an NZXT product for some internal LEDs. Now this product is only supposed to run 5 volts, but I switched some wires around so it's currently outputting 12 volts. I don't know if this is safe, so of course I'm not going to recommend you do this, but it works for me. I'm going to say that much. Here's an image that explains the different kinds of voltage a 4-pin Molex outputs depending on the wiring configuration. 
the red wire outputs 5 volts, the yellow wire outputs 12 volts, and you can also switch around to output 7 volts. Of course, in this case, I needed 12 for the LEDs, and later on, I'm going to mention the monitor, which actually uses 5 volts, but for now, I just want to show you this so you can see for yourself how you can connect different wires in a 4-pin Molex to output different voltages, which is very useful, especially if you want something very specific, or if you want something less or more, etc., etc. And lastly, the wire that we have hanging right here connects to the LCD. It gives it power and it tells it what image to output. This wire connects to its circuit board through the small opening that runs into the back of my case. So this is the back of my case. As you can see, the opening for the wire is at the top left. And here we have the circuit board. This is the VGA cable. That's what receives the signal from the graphics card. And we have where the wire connects to that small white piece in the back. So that's what gives it the LCD its signal. We also have the power switch. I don't know if I really need it. I did switch it on and it's been on since. So it doesn't really need to be something accessible, but I have it on there just in case. Here we have a 4-pin Molex that is what's providing the circuit board and LCD its current power. Of course, I'm only using the red and black cable, the black cable for ground, the red wire for uh, 5 volts. I have it connected through these blue wire connectors, which worked for me since I did not want to solder them. Once you put all of that together, this is the final product. Now, some things I did notice, in order for this to work properly, it has to be contrast between the inside of the case and the LCD. And the best contrast is the color white because any dark colors don't really help any colors on the LCD pop out. So what I did was I took some time to switch some of the components out inside the PC or paint them over with plastic dip because it's how easy it is to remove and make them white. Another thing I did, which I don't think is necessary, but I went ahead and did it anyways. I originally had a black and blue NZXT case, which I still do, but what I did was I bought another NZXT case. This one was the white glossy one, and I switched out the metal casing because everything is removable and adjustable. So I switched out the black internals for white in order just for the light to reflect more. I also switched my RAM to white RAM, and I haven't completely finished the inside of it, but I've got most of it done just enough so you guys can see how it looks. Um, so points on this as you can see some of the darker uh, wallpapers don't really work well I mean some do but the majority of dark ones don't if they're lighter um, they tend to work better or at least display better so that's what I noticed and that's what I'll be sticking with for a good while now um, but yeah this is the finished product I might add a few more LEDs if I still have room but that's that's pretty much it I think it came out really nice I really like it um, especially in my room I usually keep it dark. Brighter environments, it looks good as well, but of course, you know, a dark environment is always the ideal environment and it'll just make it look a lot better. So I want to say this project I could not have done without the help of a modern nation. It's a channel on YouTube. Check it out if you have a chance. I think he does a lot of cool stuff. I really like his content, but because of him, I was able to do most of this. Uh, he really set down a lot of the foundation for this project and I'm going to give him credit. So if you have any questions or comments, you know, you can always put it in the comments section below. I always like reading them. I actually I don't get a lot. I think this is what my third video at this point. So it's expected. And if you like what I do, feel free to subscribe. I know I don't have a lot of content plan on doing it over time, but due to my schedule, I'm very busy and I really have time. I have a few other projects in the works, but you know, take time. So I'm not sure how soon I'll be able to put them out, but we'll see what happens. And last but not least, you guys have a good one. This is One Pixel at a Time, signing out.